Okay. <coughs> so, can you hear me? Yes, it works. Mic is on, okay. So, uh, please excuse that I did not have time to prepare many slides uh, or any slides yesterday. But what I did is I wanted to write an, an article on our wiki anyway. So, it's not published yet, and I will use this um, and the examples in there. Um, well, as Dan has already indicated, um, xquery 3.1 will feature a more, um, let's say, natural mapping um, of JSON data um, into, into the, the query language, which will certainly simplify some of the use cases Dan has mentioned. And um, I really see the main uh, use for this in systems in heterogeneous systems where you have multiple um, data sources, so where you have um, yes, very structured data which fits into a service like MongoDB, but you need to mix that with um, XML documents, irregularly structured data, which you keep in XSDB. So that's where I see the main advantage. Okay, so basically the current development branch of XSDB does implement um, all of xquery 3.1 um, array data types, map data types, and, so, and uh, the entire function library with uh, one exception so far. Um, so I think we can call it a nearly complete implementation for everything related to arrays and maps and so on and JSON. Um, as far as I could see so far, it's, it's fully um, working. So uh, if you are ready to, to give it a try, I think the risks um, right now are rather small. So I've been using it um, on some customer projects as well and did not see any backwards compatibility issues or so. So it should be fine to just enable xquery 3.1 in your xquery and try that out. Um, old queries should work as before. I try to keep everything as backwards compatible as possible. Uh, <clears throat> is it three finger? Uh, ah, two fingers, okay. <laughs> so basically the JSON support in, in xquery is realized by implementing another data type, the array. Why do we need an array? Well, um, as most people know, sequences are always flat. So if you, um, if you nest two sequences, yeah, then when, it, when the expression evaluates, the, it will be flattened. Yeah? So all of your two sequences will become one sequence. That's the main difference to arrays. So for arrays, there are two um, ways to construct them um, in code, uh, literally. First one is using bracket, uh, the bracket constructor, which well, just creates the array as it reads here. So the array will conti contain four, uh, three members, the number one, the empty sequence, and another sequence containing three and four. Yeah? So it's an exact, uh, it exactly constructs the array as you wrote it, literally. Um, there's another type of constructor, the curly constructor, and this differs um, because it evaluates the expression inside the, the curly brackets um, into a sequence. Yeah? So, um, whereas up there you have four mem uh, three members, um, here you will only have two because, well, it evaluates this expression, so um, in the end you have a sequence containing one, three, and four. Um, yeah, so well, it also has three members, right? But it's, it's different, so if you try to get uh, the third member from this array, it will be three and four. And if you get the third member from this array, it will be three because it's one, three, four. So that's uh, the main difference you have to understand. And once you got that, it's quite, quite straightforward to continue. Um, So using, using those arrays in combination with maps, it's quite easy to see that you can construct uh, complex data structures 
which look a lot like um, JSON data does. Yeah? So you have a map. Let's say we have a, a, an array of books here. Um, each object in there is a map which has a title property, author property, language property. Um, you can nest arrays into it, as I've done here. So it's basically a straightforward mapping. How do you look up something in an array? Well, there are two possibilities. Um, first of all, arrays, like maps, are functions. So you just call them like a function. So $books2 gives you the second member um, of that array. Um, for maps, it's the same. There are also functions. So you can combine uh, the array lookup with a map lookup, and it, you get books, uh, the second book, uh, the title. Um, there's a shorter form for this kind of stuff using uh, question marks. So you can also write the above like, like this. Yeah? But in this case, it's important that um, if dollar books is an array, then uh, you, you need to have a number here as an op operand, an integer number. And uh, the other possibility, if it's a map, then uh, you just have a, a name here. Um, you can also use this inside a, a predicate. Yeah, like, like this, and so on. Um, for sure, you can also use expressions inside the lookup operator. So in this case, um, we do not hard code the field we look up, but we use a variable. And in this case, you have to put parentheses around it to um, make that clear. There's also another option, which is using a wildcard. Um, to get all the keys, or, uh, to get all the members of an array in a sequence. Or if it's a map, you can also use it on maps, then you get all the keys in the sequence. Um, yeah. So you can use the wildcard to iterate, um, to iterate over the books and get all the titles back. Yeah. So just for book and books and then the wild card and then you retrieve the title and that's it. Now coming, uh, yeah, function libraries, forgot about that. Um, since arrays are a, a different data type yeah, compared to sequences, um, the array module does mirror quite a lot of functions which are also available on sequences, like for each pair, fold right, fold left, filter for each. Um, so all those functions already also exist in versions to be used for uh, sequences. But here, um, they are explicitly for arrays and are uh, duplicated here in a way. Um, what is important to say is that uh, my implementation of arrays tries to be efficient um, for uh, functions like head, tail, size, uh, subarray is quite efficient. Um, what's a bit more costly is insert before, remove, yeah, um, reverse. So the point here is that like all data types in XQuery arrays are immutable, so they cannot be modified. Um, if you call append, then you get back a new array containing an additional member. And that's, that's the implementation challenge because you obviously have to make that efficient. Yeah? And uh, what I'm he using here is uh, a data structure library which comes from Clojure, um, which is also a functional language and thus deals with those things quite efficiently. Um, so append and so on will not copy the array um, it just looks like they did. Okay, so basically coming to JSON support, well, it's easy to see that um, it's quite straightforward to map um, a string of JSON into an XQuery data type now, and there's one function for it called parse JSON. Um, by default, the parse JSON function is rather strict about syntax, about the JSON syntax, I mean. Yeah, so um, in many systems, 
uh, you have kind of a relaxed syntax. So for example, you, they allow you to use single quotes instead of double quotes and so on. And that's why I, they are, um, there's a second parameter for the function which allows you to control some of the parsing behavior. So I can switch it to a more liberal mode. I can allow duplicates and so on. Um, yeah, and then, well, the value returned is just uh, either a map, an array, or an atomic type. Yeah? And in this case, it will be a map because we have an object here. And then it's quite simple to just use that map and get the ID, and you're done. So I have a real world example further down. Um, this simply tries to connect to the JSON HTTP API provided by GitHub. Yeah, and it, all it does is it, it gets um, all commits since uh, January 1st, 2015, and prints out a um, simple table. Yeah? And the um, function which prints out the data is the local log function, takes the JSON array, walks through it, then gets the commit, um, prints out uh, the date uh, when the committer committed, his name and the commit message, and that's it. And uh, so all we have to do down here is to um, access the API using the HTTP client here, send the request, and if the status is okay, then pa parse the JSON, which comes back as a binary string, and call local lock with it on it. Um, so that's the, the m more difficult method. Um, there's also a simpler one, which is just called JSON doc. Yeah, uh, JSON doc takes a uh, the same URI and basically does behind the scenes what we do manually up here. Um, for sure, you have less control. Uh, so if you really want full control and catch all the errors, then it's probably better to do it in the manual way. And finally, uh, once we have that. All, this, uh, all those JSON goodies, um, we will also want to serialize JSON sometimes. Um, the problem here is that Exist already had a JSON serializer since uh, quite a few years, um, but it was based on a mapping from XML to JSON. You know? um, for sure, pff, people would have killed me if I just disabled the old serializer and added the new one because they are completely incompatible. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I tried to find a way to, to um, keep it backwards compatibility compatible without sacrificing uh, compliance with the specification. So for the new uh, JSON serializer, um, yeah, it, you basically call it on um, a map, an array, or an atomic type. And it yeah, maps that, or well, it does not really map, need to map it, it directly outputs it as JSON. Yeah? So the rules are straightforward and quite simple. Um, you can read them in the serialization specs. Uh, and well, you can use this uh, either with, with serialize, so there you specify serialization parameter JSON like this, or you could also, um, if you have a stored query, which should return JSON, then you just do declare option output method JSON, and then return map array whatever. Um, for backwards compatibility, the rule right now is as follows. If um, the data to be serialized is a single XML element, yeah, then the old JSON serializer will be used. If it's a sequence of uh, more, uh, more than one um, um, nodes, whatever, items, um, or if it is a map, an array, or an atomic value, then the new serializer will be used. Um, and I found this to, to work quite well with all the old code we have. It um, just continues to work um, as it used to, whereas I can still use the new serializer for, for um, my newer code. And uh, well, if you want to use this, all you have to remember is that you need to switch to XQuery version 3.1, otherwise the parser will complain about the syntax. Um, yeah, and all this is available in GitHub. And uh, yeah, we would like to encourage you to 
try it out and uh, give it back and uh, so we can release it as, as soon as possible with the next version. And uh, well, if you don't want to build from source, Adam uh, kindly provides those nightly builds so you could also try them, those out. Yeah, thank you. Questions? Yes. Um, what would be the use case for all these type of functions? I mean, in terms of um, uh, efficiency, is it more, is it uh, able to do a lot of uh, data manipulation directly in exit versus putting the data out and doing it, uh, transforming it with the Java or anything like that? Do you think it's more for small stuff, or can we really build a full app inside the existing system? Um, yeah, well, the advantage of this approach is that um, the map and array data types are as fast as constructing any other sequence within Exist. Um, and experiments have shown that using parse JSON, for example, is easily possible on, docu on JSON documents having 50 megabytes or 100 megabytes. Yeah? So um, performance should be quite good. For sure, there will be some limitations once you hit several hundred megabytes of JSON, but uh, I think that's not so likely in the real world, um, usually. Um, yeah, but otherwise the, the overhead and the costs uh, are not much different. If you construct an XML node within your X query, it's about the same um, complexity than constructing a, a map or an array. So there should be no delay.